Hello. It's good to see you. Today we are going to be doing a very simple recipe and it's called Southern Fried Salmon Patties. Now I've talked about salmon patties before. This is a recipe that I just found and it's a little different from what I normally do. Now I thought I had done a video in the past of making salmon patties. I could have sworn I did but I've made over 2,300 videos for YouTube, so it's easy sometimes to forget what you have done and what you haven't done, and after a while they kind of all sort of run together. So apparently I have, I looked and I couldn't find where I had made a video making salmon patties. So we're gonna be making them today, but this recipe is a little bit different from the ones that I would make. And I wanted to try it because it has some um, different ingredients. I just thought I would try it. I've never tried this recipe. And I did, I've had several people ask me if I would do more, you know, do just recipes of simple things. You know, a lot of people I think are not eating out as much. They want to make food at home because it's, you know, not as expensive. Um, and a lot of people just have never really prepared, you know, they've never cooked or baked or anything like that. So they're looking for basic recipes that they can start with that just use simple ingredients and they're easy to do. You don't get much more simple than this. I think anybody could do this. Um, but before I get into this, I will explain the salmon patties that I make. And I make them the way my mom always made them when I was growing up. And they're even simpler than this. You don't even have to write anything down. I mean, you can, but you don't have to measure anything. You don't need fancy stuff. All you need is one can of salmon, any kind, it doesn't matter, just a can of salmon, uh, breadcrumbs, any kind, or crumbled up crackers, and one egg, and that's it. And you mix everything together, and you keep adding breadcrumbs, or cracker crumbs, or whatever you have. You just keep adding it gradually until you get sort of like a, like a dough. It's kind of like a, it's like a meat biscuit. So you just have your egg in there, your can of salmon, and your breadcrumbs, and you just stir it, and you get your little meat biscuit, and you form it into a little patty, and I will be showing you how to do that with these. You make a little patty with it, and then you have a pan of oil, whatever cooking oil you like to use, and you get that in there, get some hot oil, and you just fry it in there, and I'm gonna show you how to do that. And there you go, and they're done. And I always like to put them on a paper towel to kind of soak up a little bit of that oil because otherwise they might get a little soggy. But just, you know, let them sit on a paper towel for a little bit and soak up a little bit of that oil. It's good, it's so good and they're surprisingly filling. They're inexpensive to make and they kind of go with anything. Um, a lot of times when I was a kid, we would have uh, salmon patties with green beans, like, so the salmon patty would be like your meat, you know, and then you would have like a biscuit with that, an American biscuit, not a cookie, you know, like a, a biscuit, American biscuit, green beans, macaroni and cheese, maybe some mashed potatoes, some, I don't know, stewed tomatoes or just whatever, you know, just whatever we were having, you know, just have the salmon patty along with that on your plate, you know. And it's good. And growing up, that was the only way I ever ate fish. Um, my dad hates fish. My mom likes some fish, but never really seems to eat it. I never even had fish sticks growing up. The only way I ever had any fish was salmon. And I do have a shellfish allergy, so I don't touch, I don't touch seafood at all. Um, and I don't really like fish, but this, even if you don't like fish, these salmon patties don't have a texture, like there's nothing about fish that appeals to me. I don't like the smell, I don't like the texture, I don't like the taste, but this has none of that. So yeah, even if you're somebody who doesn't like fish, you might like this. Um, so yeah, for this in, for this recipe though, we do, need, we do need more ingredients. But again, for the ones that I normally make, it's just the same procedure but with fewer ingredients. And I use breadcrumbs, like just a little can of breadcrumbs, or you can make your own, or cracker crumbs. You know, you can use any kind of thing like that. And one egg per can. And you could get, just from one can, making salmon patties like that, I could get eight or nine salmon patties out of here with no problem. And uh, yeah, it's it's really filling. It's, it's a nice economical little thing that you can that you can prepare yourself very easily. 
But for this recipe, we're going to need one 12 ounce can of salmon. This is some northern catch, harvest of the sea, wild Alaska pink salmon. I got this at Aldi. Two whole eggs, so this one calls for two eggs instead of one. A quarter of a cup of chopped onions, and I picked up just this white onion. It doesn't specify a type of onion. So I just got this little white onion at, at Walmart yesterday. You also need a quarter of a cup of chopped bell peppers. I didn't see bell peppers at Walmart yesterday, but I picked up these peppers here. You had to buy a pack of three. Um, these are Lipman green peppers. Um, these came from Lidl. And uh, I'm not going to need anywhere near this much. We actually just need a quarter of a cup, so I have extra green peppers that I can put in something. <laughs> You're also going to need two tablespoons of yellow cornmeal. Now there are uh, products out there called cornmeal mixes. You want to get just plain yellow cornmeal. So instead of using cracker crumbs or breadcrumbs in here, we're going to be using just a little bit of yellow cornmeal. And we have another, another thing too in, in place of the breadcrumbs. You're also going to need a half a teaspoon of salt. Look at this. I found this at the little flea market thing a few weekends ago. It's a little mini Tupperware set. Look at this. I brought it home. I washed it up and I have a little salt and pepper shaker. Isn't that cute? So <laughs> we had, when I was a kid, we had the full size Tupperware salt and pepper shakers. They were just like this, except they were just, you know, they were bigger than these. And it even has a little holder with it. I got this for a dollar. I thought that was pretty cool. So yeah, I, I like to show that off. So we do need that. We're going to need a half a teaspoon of salt, half a teaspoon of garlic powder right here. And I just picked up some great value garlic powder from Walmart. This was a dollar in here. And a lot of these ingredients, I think if you don't like them, you could just leave them out. I mean, salmon patties are really versatile. You could add stuff. You could take stuff out. I think as long as you have a binder, your egg or something like that, and something to kind of, you know, thicken it up a little bit, whether it's breadcrumbs or whatever, you can add or subtract stuff all you like. All right, you're also going to need two tablespoons of mayonnaise. And here I have the most adorable little thing of dukes you ever saw. Look at that. It is the tiniest. I've never seen a little thing of dukes that little. That's okay though, because we don't need a whole lot. I just bought a little thing of it because I, I went on a tomato sandwich kick not too long ago. And I didn't want a gigantic thing of mayonnaise because I knew I wouldn't use most of it. Because I don't actually use a lot of mayonnaise every day. You know, it's something I don't use a ton of in my everyday life. So I just bought this. I found this at Harris Teeter, this little tiny thing of Dukes. Dukes. Isn't it cute? Oh my gosh. So you're going to need mayonnaise, which I've never put mayonnaise in salmon patties. So that's interesting. You also need a teaspoon of Worcestershire sauce. And this we found yesterday at Walmart for a dollar. Great value Worcestershire sauce. Aldi also has their own Worcestershire sauce. And at my Aldi, it's 99 cents. So it's a whole penny cheaper. If you're interested, you don't have to go out and buy, you know, expensive Worcestershire sauce. You can just, they all taste the same to me. So I don't think it matters. It also says you need a teaspoon of Texas Pete hot sauce. And when I was at Walmart shopping for ingredients yesterday, they didn't, the only Texas Pete they had were big containers. And we don't really use hot sauce for anything. So I just wanted to get a little thing of hot sauce. I just got some Tabasco sauce. We're only going to be putting a little bit in here, just a smidge. Um... Yeah, so it's, it's, you don't need a whole lot of hot sauce. It's one teaspoon for this entire recipe. So I wasn't going to go all over looking for Texas Pete. I just got this little thing of Tabasco sauce. So we're going to put a teaspoon of that in there. We are also going to need a half a teaspoon of ground black pepper. And I have some right here in my little thing. So you're going to need salt and pepper. Now, when I make them my way, I don't add any salt or pepper to it. Um, personally, I don't think it needs any salt or pepper, but that's just me. I, like, I don't like a lot of salt on my food anyway. Um, but that way, if you're, if you're eating it and you don't think it has enough salt or pepper on it, I guess you could just add it after the fact to your taste. 
Um, and also you need one slice of crumbled up white bread. Now I'm not really sure if it has to be dried out like a piece of dried up bread. The, bre the slice of bread I'm going to use is this right here. Look, it's Love and Fresh Classic White Bread. This is from Aldi. Now I have to say I've noticed something about this bread just in the last couple of weeks. They used to use nice thick plastic bags. They don't anymore. Now they use these thinner plastic bags, which I guess they're doing to cut costs. Um, I can't complain because at my Aldi, these loaves of bread are still just 50 cents. I don't know how they do it, but you can get a loaf of plain white bread for, you can still get them for 50 cents and they still have their hamburger buns and hot dog buns for 89 cents a pack. Um, so I guess in order to just cut some costs, they just went with a less expensive bag. So we're going to be just using a slice of this Love and Fresh classic white bread. And I think what I'll do, I'll just toast it to kind of dry it out before I crumble, before I crumble it up. Well, it says it has, yeah, crumbled up. So I'm going to dry it out first. And then you're also going to need a quarter of a cup of flour added slowly as needed to adjust consistency. So to help thicken it up, you're going to be using the flour instead of, you know, like breadcrumbs or whatever. But we are going to have a piece of bread dried and crumbled into it too. So we do have a little bit of breadcrumbs in here. You could just, I think you could just use breadcrumbs if you don't feel like messing with a piece of bread. I don't think it matters. And I, I was looking at this can of salmon and I've always kind of wondered why the cans are tapered like this. And I like to learn something new every day. That's just something I try to learn at least one new thing every day. So I did a quick Google search and I wanted to read to you about canned salmon. I learned some stuff. Now this is just Google, so you don't, you know, take it with a grain of salt. It may not, it may or may not be true. It's not the gospel. Um, I'm just, I just want to read to you what I found out about the humble can of salmon. So my first question was, why are salmon cans tapered like they're a little smaller at the top? The cans have to be shipped to the canneries from other locations. With the tapered style, the cans can be are stacked like paper cups and don't take up as much space. This makes them more streamlined for packaging and cuts shipping costs. And then, okay, also you're gonna notice when we open this, there will be little bones in here little salmon bones. Now when my mom made salmon patties, she'd take the bones out. She wouldn't leave it in there. Personally, I leave them in there. And I'm going to read to you about those salmon bones. Okay, salmon bones in the can. The bones are full of bone building calcium. According to a Penn State calcium rich eating lesson, the canning process makes the salmon bones soft and digestible. Just a half cup of canned salmon contains 290 milligrams of calcium, calcium, but you must eat the bones to get the calcium. The bones that are usually present in canned salmon are perfectly edible and provide a rich source of calcium. The canning process makes the bones soft enough to chew and mix well with the meat. So I just, I leave them in there, but you don't have to. Uh, and also, saw this on Google, is canned salmon as healthy as fresh salmon? You may be surprised to know that canned and fresh salmon are both equally nutritious. The canning process doesn't degrade the nutrients in fish, so you'll get protein, heart healthy, omega-3 fats, and other nutrients from fresh and canned sources of salmon. So again, this was just a Google search, you know, take it for whatever's worth. I just thought I would share because mainly I just wanted to know why the cans are tapered like that. So yeah, that's why it, it saves, it saves space. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and here's another great thing about this recipe too. You're not going to mess up a bunch of dishes making this. And I love recipes that don't mess up all my dishes. The muffins we made last time messed up about every dish I have, every measuring spoon, every measuring cup, all my bowls, it messed up everything. It was a nightmare. <laughs> This is very simple. You're gonna need a bowl to mix everything in and a pan to fry it in. And that's about it. So let's go ahead and get started. We are all set and ready to combine all of our ingredients. And it's just all gonna go into one bowl. 
But first I have to show you my bowls. These are from Zach, Z-A-K, uh, exclamation point. And we have this pretty little set of speckled bowls from Zach Designs. Um, you can actually find these on Amazon. I found these in, a, in an antique store, but they're not antiques. They're so cute. Look at them. For mixing all of our ingredients, I think we're just going to go ahead and go with the largest bowl. We'll take everything out. All right, so I'm going to follow the instructions in the recipe. It says that you want to open the salmon and place it in a colander in the sink to drain. Now when you open it, it's going to look like something like that. So we're going to drain this and then we're going to add it to the bowl. Now when I make my salmon patties my way, I do not drain the salmon. I just put it in there as is. I leave all that juice in there. But for this recipe, we're going to be draining that. Okay, I have now drained it and you take it out of the can and it's going to look like this. You don't have to worry about removing the skin or anything. Um, the bones are in there. It, it's up to you whether you leave them in or not. So we're gonna go ahead and put this in the bowl. Like that. Next, we're going to flake the salmon with a fork. Just kind of picking it apart. You're gonna see the skin in there. That's all right. You don't need to try to remove that, it's okay. And just sort of, there are the bones right there. And again, you can take these out. They're gonna look like these little pieces right here, but that you, you can eat them. I'll leave them in there. I think I've now said that about 18 times, I'm sorry. It just, I try to remember that, you know, some people will be making this for the first time. They might have never opened a can of salmon before, and I just wanted them to know what to expect. Sometimes we forget when we do things over and over we forget what it's like for people who are, you know, do, you know, opening, like just opening a can of salmon for the first time. We forget about how they experience that. I try to keep that in mind when I, when I do these videos so that I, I can help you know what to expect. Okay. So I've just kind of fluffed it up. You really can't overdo this part it doesn't matter <laughs> okay so we've kind of picked it apart with the fork and I'm just I'm just separating these these big pieces all right so I think that's I think that's good for now all right so the next step is to add two whole eggs Let me get this out of the way we have our two whole eggs here and this is just one can of salmon. Bloop. Bloop. There we go. All right. Now it doesn't say to stir at this point. It says to add your chopped onions and your bell peppers. Next we're going to add our cornmeal. We have this this is what cornmeal looks like. That's our Quaker yellow cornmeal. I'm going to add in the cornmeal. Then we have our salt from our lovely little, our little Tupperware, Tupperware salt shaker. Like, isn't that adorable? It still has the little, the little S on it. These are so, these are so cute. Okay, so we add the salt. Next, we're going to add in our garlic powder. There's our garlic powder. And our mayonnaise. We're going to get the mayonnaise out of there. Some mayonnaise. And our Worcestershire sauce. And our hot sauce. What's that? I can smell it from here. And our black pepper. 
here. Look at these are just so cute. <laughs> I love them. All right, now it says to crumble the slice of bread and toss it into the bowl. I just toasted this lightly. Uh, I the first piece I tried to make, I burned a little bit, so I just put some jelly on it and ate it. <laughs> I watched this one more closely. <laughs> it says to, it's not super dried. My hands are clean, I promise. I always have to explain that because when I was a kid, my mom would always ask me right before I... As soon as I touched any food, she would ask if my hands were clean. <laughs> I noticed after I finished filming the first segment that if you look in the background, there's a roll of toilet paper sitting on the counter. <laughs> you may have wondered about that. I didn't realize it was there. <laughs> uh, lately, Boop, our youngest cat, we, her official name is Olive, but nobody calls her that. Uh, we all call her Boop. Boop has lately decided that chewing up rolls of toilet paper is the most fun thing in the world. It's like her new hobby. So right now I am having to keep toilet paper away from her. Even if it's just sitting on the, the tank, she will grab it and chew it. She will chew on it. She will pull it down off the tank or wherever she can find it and try to eat it. <laughs> And so I took it out of the, the bathroom and I, I just set it, like that was a new roll that I brought down and I just set it there and I forgot to move it. So that's why, that's why it wasn't like some sort of subliminal message. That was just why the toilet paper was back there. gentle enough right there I suppose hopefully okay now the recipe says if the mixture is very moist you can add in flour as needed to kind of thicken it up a little bit you want to just add it in gradually so we're gonna try that and this is what I do when I make them with my breadcrumbs you can mix these with your hands. I have no interest in sticking my hands in there. Yeah, I have absolutely no interest in uh, touching that, so I'm not going to. you just kind of have to do by feel. See that it's developing more of like a paste, like a pasty look.
I'm going to have to handle this to make patties. Um, I think that's good enough though. I think that will work. All right. Now the next step at this point is to get our pan ready with the oil. We want to get the, the, the cooking oil hot and then we will form patties and fry them up. All right, now I have a pan here. This is my this is my meat skillet. Basically, I use this to brown I use this to brown ground beef. I use it to make salmon patties. It's a great little pan. And I have just basically covered the bottom with vegetable oil here, just enough to kind of fill the bottom. It is nice and warm. I have it on medium heat. And I have my I have my mix here. I haven't done anything else with it. So what you're gonna do, you're just gonna take some my hands are clean. <laughs> you're gonna take some of your mixture. Um it still feels kind of wet to me, so I'm actually going to stop and add, I'm gonna clean my hands and I'm gonna add a little bit more flour to this. All right. Okay, I've added a little bit more flour. That definitely helped. Okay. So you're just gonna take some here and you want it to kind of hold together like that. Now, that oil is already hot. You don't want it to be smoking or anything. Again, I have it on basically like a, a medium heat. Form it into a little patty. See, it's about the size of the palm of my hand. You can make them as big or as small as you want. Now you want to very gently and carefully place it in there. Like that. And get another one going. Now it will pop all so you want to make sure you don't have the heat up too high. You can put them on a spatula to drop them down in there. However you want to do it. Once I start putting them in there, I turn the heat down a little bit. I've got it on medium low now. I've never burned myself doing that, don't worry. I've been making these things for 30 years. really fast. I did turn the heat down. I've got it just below medium low. I also have a plate nearby with a paper towel on it. This is ready to put my cooked patties on. We're just gonna put them on here. You don't have to put a bunch of oil in there. And again, I just put enough oil in there to cover the bottom of the pan. You can add more if you want to. That's just all I do right there. I think they look nice and you're just cooking it basically you're just trying to cook it all the way through 
And while these are frying, if you want to just go ahead and take another plate and make up your patties, you can certainly do that. I just make them as I go. I don't know. That's just the way I do it. This is what they're going to look like when they're done. And look at look at all the oil that's already soaked into that paper towel. So I just let them kind of sit. You can even take your paper towel and kind of pat it like that. Just give it a little pat. Or you can flip them over on the towel just to soak up a little bit more. And that, as they cool, I think getting that extra oil off there makes the outside a little bit more crunchy as well. from just one can of salmon. Is that one onion piece in there going to town? Look at it. time you flip them you have to be careful because as they cook they kind of solidify when you first start cooking them they uh they're not as firm they're a little looser now don't worry about me getting popped with grease again i have been doing this for over 30 years i have made thousands of salmon patties literally i'm okay I know, I know right where I want the heat to be. Get those onion bits out of there. They smell good. Really just smells like onions. <laughs> There's a pepper, a pepper piece. So 
So that will be a total of 10. And I could get at least one more out of here, maybe two. I could do one big one or two smaller ones with what's left. So that's quite a lot out of just one little old can of salmon. And a few other ingredients, nothing fancy. pieces of onion are good. I kind of smell the bell pepper now. Adjust the temperature up and down as needed as I go. That's just what I do. corner of your little paper towel or whatever you're using and just kind of give it a, a little pat. Just like that. And look at all that, look at all that oil. It's kind of hard to see, but there's oil. There's grease on here, but it doesn't really show. It's there. And take these out too. Right. Look at that. All of that from one can of salmon and some other stuff. And I'm going to finish making these. I'm going to make one or two more and then we can taste them. We now have all of our salmon patties ready. 
I was able to get two more perfectly respectable looking salmon patties out of that bowl. Look at that, here they are. These are the two extras. So I ended up with 12 salmon patties from this recipe. Now typically when I make these, um, we'll eat two of these each, you know, along with other stuff. So this, this would feed six people along with other stuff obviously or you can eat more and they're even good cold I mean I'll stick them in the refrigerator whatever I have left over what I do is I would just take a little you know container with the lid on it line it with a little bit of paper towel in there to soak up any extra oil and I would just layer them in that container and just put a piece a layer of paper towel between each row or layer of these however many I have and if I just have one left over I'll just wrap it up in a paper towel and stick it in there and eat it later you can heat it up or you can eat it cold I, I don't care I mean just however you like it but aren't they pretty look at that all right very pretty I'm going to pick for me my favorite ones are the ones that have a little bit of scald on them they're not burned but they're just a they got a little bit of scald on them like this one right here I like these they're a little bit a little bit crunchy on the outside these I like best and you can see little bits of uh, onion in there and green pepper as well you don't have to stand on ceremony to eat these I just we just pick them up and bite them just like a biscuit you just eat them like this mmm you see the inside stays kind of whitish looking that's actually really good Mm. Now, I'm not one to add onion and all that other stuff to it, but this is actually not bad. Mmm. I can taste that little bitty bit of hot sauce. That's interesting. I never thought of adding just a little bit of hot sauce to these. It doesn't make them hot or anything. But it adds a little bit of oomph. Like it's not, it doesn't make them hot. Like, oh my God, you know. No, not at all. I like that little bit of hot sauce in there. Mmm. Look at that. These are great. These are really good. I guess they're a little bit more fancy than the ones I typically make. So if you look at the inside of it, it actually does kind of, to me, it looks like bread. It looks like you're just eating some kind of dense bread, but it's not. Well, it's a, it's a meat biscuit. That's the best term I've ever come up with to describe these things. They're a meat biscuit. <laughs> mm. And this right here is the only way you will ever see me eat fish because other than this I don't like fish these are wonderful I like it that little bit of pepper in there is nice too like just the black pepper I don't normally put salt or pepper or anything in mine like I said mine it's really simple can of salmon, one egg, and breadcrumbs mixed in to get the right consistency to, to hold together. And that's it. You can take that basic recipe and add anything you want to it. You could just grow from there. You could put all kinds of stuff in it if you want. Okay, I wasn't really sure how I was going to feel about this with some of the ingredients in it, especially the hot sauce. Oh, and the Worcestershire sauce too. I forgot about that. I wasn't really sure how they were going to be, but I really like it. I think it's just the right amount, little bits of stuff. <laughs> it's not too crazy. It's not too much. I think it's the perfect amount of stuff to give it some interesting flavor. I really like these. And we'll have to say for my kids, they don't like onions or peppers or anything. I could leave those out, but put in the other stuff and be curious to see what they think of them. 
like add the other stuff and don't tell them. Mm. So there we have it. Look at that. Southern fried salmon patties. So easy. Simple ingredients. You could totally make these. Even if you've never prepared any food before, I know you could do this. So I'm going to put a link in the uh, description to the recipe if you want to look at it yourself. Um, I found it on Facebook, so I don't know if you can access it if you don't have Facebook. Um, if not, I'll, I'll maybe I can put it up some other way, but I will, I will post a link to where I found it. So hopefully it will work for you and you can try it for yourself. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed getting to see these lovely little salmon patties come into being today. I sure enjoyed it. I'm looking forward to having some more later. <laughs> this is going to be part of our dinner tonight. <laughs> Thank you so much for being here. I really hope that you have a wonderful day and I'll see you again soon.